The sun smiled with strong beams upon the shooters at the Bisley Battleground for top flight shooters. This year's historic clash of the 145th Imperial Meeting will continue to test concentration, finite precision and quick reflexes. Having been held at the Bisley Shooting Centre since 1895, the 3,000 acre estate hosts multiple shooting grounds with 300, 500, 600, 900 and 1,000 metre ranges, where more than 1,000 participants readied themselves for the numerous competitions. People come from all over the world for this. We all, I, I shot here in the millennium and I think we had around about 2,000 competitors that year. Today I, I'm not certain but I think there's around about 1,000 and most of the guys that are going on to shoot in the Commonwealth Games will have competed here as well. It's, um, it's uh, one of the biggest competitions around for, for full ball shooting. The Falklands have their own claim on Bisley's history, having donated a stuffed king penguin to the museum in 1984. More recently, the Falklands have attended the events to hone their skills, with this year's team using the shoot as preparation for the Commonwealth Games. Having sent a large team to battle in this highly prestigious competition in both individual and team shoots, representing the islands on an international scale was the team of Ken Aldridge, cousins and Commonwealth competitors Derek Goodwin and Gareth Goodwin, as well as Derek Pettersson, coach of the Commonwealth Games team. As with many large-scale competitions, the Falklands drew a lot of attention, making friends from a multitude of different nations, one of whom was Eddie Bruce, a Surrey local who helped to coach the team during the junior overseas competition. Half right. Yeah, the effect on the bullet that uh, goes, travels down the range is affected by wind. And what we've got to do is to calculate how much wind and the impact point on the target. You can move at 600 yards, the breeze can actually, if it's really strong, can take you anything up to five to six feet. The light wind, which has been like over the last few days, you're getting movements of about 15 inches maximum, but that's more than the width of the ball, so we have to, to look after it. His local knowledge of the wind was invaluable for our competitors, especially when shooting at great distance, where a slight misreading of an oncoming gust can push a bullet off target. So what do you bring to the, the Falklands team? Basically local knowledge, local ra ranges, it does help if you've got local knowledge on them. Uh, the wind, the wind patterns, there are certain peculiarities here. So yeah, it's local knowledge I think is the main thing. I actually came down to the Falklands with the, the Royal Navy. I was on HMS Ashanti when the airport was actually opened and uh, from then also I shot here with Hampshire and one of the members was a Falkland Islander. So when the team came over I was made known to them and I've always you know, been contacted ever since. Derek Pettersson, coach and shooter for the Falklands team, explained the challenges of shooting in Bisley compared with the Falklands. Well, a lot of the time in the Falklands we get a fairly consistent wind in one direction, so although we might be shooting with a lot of wind on our sights, we don't necessarily have to move very much here. You can move two or three minutes of wind from the left to the right between shots. If you don't catch that, you could go from, say, a magpie on the left of the target to a magpie on the right of the target between shots because you haven't kept up with the wind readings. So it, it makes a very big difference here. You have to be very alert to the wind. While the Falklands are used to shooting in harsh but constant winds, Eddie, the team's wind coach, felt the polar opposite weather conditions at Bisley would pose a challenge to the team. I said to come up into a, a temperature of eight, you know, high 80s, close to the 90s, I think it definitely doesn't help me at all. But they seem to shoot quite well. You know, it's, a, it's a team effort. It always has been. About 11 minutes to start. Competitors and teams make left the firing point with all the equipment. In the junior overseas shoot, fierce competitors Guyana and New Zealand took first and second. However, while the Falklands didn't place in the top ranks for the shooters in this competition, over 300, 500 and 600 yards, the team still managed to achieve some impressive scores for an unfamiliar setting. In one of the rounds of this event, Derek Goodwin managed to shoot a 50 out of 50 
and explained his amazement with the achievement. Today I had a very good shoot for, my, for myself as a personal best. Um, I did shoot a 50 and 50 at 600 yards. Um, unfortunately some of our other scores weren't quite enough. Um, but I think we've done well. Every shot in the bull out, out of a 10 round shoot and we shot at 600 yards. Um, I can't get better, really. Later in another competition, the Champion of Champions, an event where all the best shooters from national clubs pit themselves against one another, Derek Goodwin managed to score an impressive 69.8, placing him in eighth position. A major feat for the islands when battling against such large nations. With overseas shooting, you have a much bigger competition to shoot. It's a chance to, to win an overseas competition and every year we tend to enter or every time we come over here we try to enter the same competitions and try and improve. In other competitions the Falklands battled well including the junior Colapur, a 10 round shoot over 300, 500 and 600 yards with everyone in the team placing over 140 points. In one of the toughest shoots, the 900 and 1000 yard competition, it was sharpshooter and veteran of the team, Ken Aldridge, who managed to prick the top points from a distance where the target was but a blur in the distance. Here are the results from some of the other competitions the Falklands participated in. Despite the Imperial meeting being a serious competition, there was a great friendly atmosphere which was echoed in the actions of many of the shooters, with many of the nations having a secret soft spot for the Falklands. In fact, because we're such a small place and often we've shot with them in the past at India or Australia or Kuala Lumpur or here, um, they're all very helpful and a lot of the guys are any, any problems we have, just come and we'll offer help. They're very, very, very helpful. Yeah, the other day Gareth was shooting and laid down and his sights fell to bits and a guy from Jersey just lay on there said, oh, you can borrow mine, you know. Without that he wouldn't be able to complete his shoot, so everyone's very helpful. While the Falklands entered under no illusion that they were unlikely to be walking away with the top prizes, the friendly atmosphere between the competitors is what continues to make the competition a highly attended, well-respected event. Bisley's a wonderful place there, you always enjoy it. It's, um, and you always learn something new, you're always learning. It's a sport that you can start when you're 14 and you can be still competing to a decent level until you're nearly into your 70s and, and such. So, so you're always learning, you're always picking up something new. And of course, there's always the, the friends that you've made in previous years. Well, this always has been there. We tried to help each other. The main thing I think, you know, is I've always been on a roll. I've done a lot of coaching to try and bring youngsters on as well. It's a, a sport that you can start at the age of 14 and you can go well into your 80s. Um, you can go up to nearly anyone and have a conversation with them, ask questions, meet them in the clubhouses afterwards. Um, they're always willing and ready to give a little bit of help or whatever, you know, or advice. Um, it's great.